before the done. But I remember what an OG told me. He say, even the trans can get a steak sometimes. I took that to heart. And I understand faith where I work is dead. And I know that hard work really pays off. And God don't make mistakes. This is my testimony. I'm the diamond in the dirt. I just ain't been found. I'm the underground king. I just ain't been crowned. Niggas say they got beef. Why well, ain't get down? When I was young, I wouldn't eat, so I started playing with pound. Pick up that work and start grinding. The trucks in the streets were so grinding. And so called free, it was some timing. Who knew about a pick up that pee and start rhyming? Then one day I would shine like a diamond. I felt through hunger pains in the bottom of my stomach Mama ain't have a job, so she wasn't bringing in no money She smoked up all the furniture till we ain't have nothing Wasn't no option for me, but hit the street cause we was suffering Childhood fucked up, gave me that ambition Motivated me to grind hard till I got in position They murdered my little brother while I sat off in that prison Came home and went harder, now I'm completing my mission to get the people to understand how this slave narrative rolled out and how they was hiding behind the pale face. I got a slave instructional video uh, on how to control the ones on the plantation. The plantation was when they invaded Big Mama and Big Papa always had the farm. Come back to Big Mama house um, for holidays, family functions, major events. A lot of the elders who didn't live in the city, we lived in Big Mama house. Uh, they told us the slaves was being kept by the people that lived in the big house. The big house take Mama name out of it right there in our face. Everything is to usurp, undermine, devalue, manipulate, manipulate to monopolize rightful heirs to the land. So as long as you don't know you from the land, you can't assert your birthright to the land. The only way you can forfeit is you have to claim, fail to claim at the appropriate time your rightful inheritance. It's like uh, you got a basketball game and y'all got four players. You got to have five players to start the game. And then right before game time, nobody shows up. So it's the same principle. The surrender is normally the byproduct of a war. It's when somebody beating you so bad and just like saying uncle. And just like saying uncle. It's like tapping out. In this particular situation, we had over 5,000 tribes. Easy. That's just in North America. We're not even talking about the ones that came from South America, some more and more. We're not talking about the ones that came from New Zealand. We're not talking about the ones that came from Australia to fight in the Gullah Wars. Came from Australia to fight in the Gullah Wars. Because they came from fucking everywhere. That's why they think he calling us Seminole. See, Sem Seminole root word is semi, which means half. The ones they call Hebrews are referred to as Semites. That means that somewhere along the way they mix with something. They only part of the whole. The Prussian Mountains and the Kazarians, who were the mulatto offspring of the Blackamoors, and as a is, so they don't just throw their children out. They left them in char charge of as accountants over the banks, which gives them the right to handle the money for the tutors, the black nobility, the unseen hand, the hidden hand, the, the black nobility, 
the unseen hand, the hidden hand, the black hand. The ones who don't want to be seen by the public, so y'all don't rebel against them and beat they bitch asses and take your shit back. When you go to the Black's Law Dictionary and you look up free white persons in law, not only do it tell you they Moors, but it tell you they not Caucasians. It's absolutely not a Caucasian, Norseman. It's not none of them. It's a black a Moor, a Moor. We know the term Moor is a catch term. And the ones that came from Europe as Moors was called Moray, in Ray. And it was a derogatory term, the same as nigga. We want to have ethnic pride in some shit that don't got nothing to do with us. And so when they church doctrine, we became more Christian than they priests and preachers. And they can't understand how these motherfuckers live by that shit. Because we wrote that shit and we can't keep up. It's the morals versus the dogma dynamic. Morally upright people going to always try to maximize the moral compass. The difference in immorality and uh, inhumanity something that the human species should not be doing like bloodletting rituals on children so we got all this stuff going on and we stuck between a compass of morality that's predicated up on inhumanity so as long as we follow in a legislative morality we don't even know what the laws of nature says is moral because the laws of nature says is moral because we follow in the mandates, dictates, ideologies of men. All of this stuff that we see around us is a carefully crafted construct of psychopathic racial personalities, but they ain't pale. This is the hardest thing for me to digest and to reiterate is that they look like us, but they ain't us. And that shit hurt my feelings so bad that I didn't never want to tell y'all what was going on because if anybody feelings is hurt, as bad as mine was, then the whole dynamic would be more damaging to the psyche. But the truth got to be told. Leave out of the Piscean age, where everybody hid underwater. So everything we're seeing is slightly off center. The spitting fish is under the water, but he has adjusted his vision where he can shoot. Uh, a spittle of water and knock a bug off a branch that he's not supposed to be able to do that because of the offset of the vision but for some reason this spitting fish has allowed his psyche his brain to adjust for the differences in the underwater viewing of what's not underwater so he can see it clearly enough to target in bead and shoot that motherfucker with a ball of spit it's the same principle coming from underwater in our thinking where we were being drowned with misinformation, um, misdirection, and all these David Copperfield type tricks. The law that they set up is not the laws of nature. And if we don't go back to the laws of nature and live in harmony with the earth and the other beings on the earth, I don't give a fuck what your skin look like will not be here carrying the old paradigms waste product into the new or earth into the new or earth we it's just it's going to be incompatible we there's nothing wrong with people having self love pride in themselves but to develop the superiority complex this is exactly how we got in this shit i keep telling y'all mama said the good had to suffer with the bad so, and, and both of them got to suffer because the ones who didn't do the dirt is going to be the ones able to follow the compass in the hero's journey to ascend to the mountaintop and be the goat on top of the hill looking out over the rest of the mountains. And the mountains mean governments. And it's 12 governments of the earth. And these 12 matriarchal orders fall under what we call the Daughters of Isis. So when we're looking at all these different people over the years that tried to change the condition that was unsuccessful, it wasn't that they was totally unsuccessful. It was that they did their part. Once you take the fir first step, you activate the process. Seeing what's going on now is not only have we took the first step, 
we almost we at the finish line tiptoeing across that motherfucker in everybody's face and they keep acting like we not even in the race right so we looking for the exit now my mom and pops been gone four and five years respectively this year at the end I know there's something I need to find so what I do being the Scorpio I am I try to keep the appearance of business as usual I don't look as think it's business as usual with me it's definitely not not even close there's something here that we miss if it's close as in um, geographically close I don't know if it's close as in time wise close and I don't even know if it's close as in affectionately close I gotta find it looking I ain't finding shit there gotta be a trigger to set into um, motion the grand finale and make them bring all that secret squirrel shit to the open while I'm looking for that I can't stop grief cause grief gonna grieve when it grieve you gonna feel that shit when you feel that shit however it come my goal is to not to abuse and misuse somebody while I'm going through a struggle now you didn't say it or done something to somebody you really genuinely care about that's genuinely there for you. But now you been fucked up to the point where apology can't fix this shit. That's why my first order of business when I'm dealing with internal self crisis is isolation. We do that shit and because we care about them, we felt well, it's cool, they forgive me fair to the person you care about and it ain't fair to yourself because you're going to need the person you care about on a different level when you recover they ain't there because you then took out all of your anger with everybody else on your comfort you can't beat your comfort like the enemy you can't abuse the people you care about like they the enemy that's why I'm like fucked up because they act like we just started having relationships like in the 50s or something. Like this is some new shit to us. Men and women have never dated in the history of the world into the 50s. Now we got to figure out how to have a relationship. But my research, my observation to me is we making this shit hard because we being selfish, entitled, and self-centered. Men and women across the board men become domestically violent and turn a beautiful love affair into a hostage crisis disguised as the love affair women turn into naggers but these new people don't feel bonded unless it's a trauma bond right bad ideas are living organisms why you say that Rod what do you mean they living organisms they follow the same path of any other virus to find another fertile mind to fuck up so that this fucked up shit can be spread like wildfire. If you know somebody, you don't know them in war the way you're going to know them in peace. You're not going to know the guy from the battlefield the same as you know him in the hood. Unless your hood a battlefield, because some of the hoods is battlefields. Unless your hood a battlefield, because some of the hoods is battlefields. But what I mean by that is this. The warrior fighting the war is not going to be the lover yet. It's not going to be the attentive one. Not going to coddle your needs. Not going to coddle your needs. Because he at war. When you at war, you can't shift out of war mode until you see the peace flag. It's the white flag. And these motherfuckers ain't way raising no white flags yet. We go by totem poles, and we go by war bonnets. And we go by war bonnets. When you see a bunch of chiefs riding around with all white war bonnets on, we in peace time. 
But for the foreign invaders who brought the law of the flag on our shores, and if you don't see no white flag, the war still rage. I'm looking for the white flag. That motherfucker some goddamn where. It's gonna be over a state building. It's gonna be over a, a military um, installations. That white flag is flying right now. We don't even know where it's at. Cause we, we so busy focusing on, um, did my girl look at that nigga muscles when he was flexing? Did her man look at that other chick ass? We fucking fighting a war. Who gives a fuck? Look at that other chick ass. We fucking fighting a war. Who gives a fuck? We fighting a war. The hardest part for us to understand is we fighting a whole fucking war. This is a 500 year old protracted struggle. If you don't know that war evolves over time and take on many faces and causes people to behave in a different manner than they would in a time of peace, you're going to be lost. And we know because I didn't produce the receipts that this is not just a physical war, but it's also a kind of war. And that the reason why Martin Luther King was uh, using the Gandhi nonviolent, the same reason Gandhi used it, the same reason that motherfucking um, um, Marcus Garvey built the whole fucking military and said, oh shit, we can't even fight. I did all this shit for nothing. And said, oh shit, we can't even fight. I did all this shit for nothing. This is a waiting game. This is a student's game to become a master. It's about who gonna read the most books, who gonna apply the most discipline to overcome the psychological deficit of the Kali Yuga. Elijah Muhammad told his nation don't get no guns. Don't mean it, don't mean some of them got no guns because like me, I believe in fucking firearms. I believe as long as my enemy got a gun, I should have 10. All that regarded, we was fighting a war that had evolved beyond the blood that ran through the canals of Miami, the canals of Orlando, the blood that drenched the Mississippi, that went into New Orleans, to the Delta. Uh, a girl named Amina Nicole be with MREC on a receipt drop on the shattered screen. Y'all gotta get that. When I got out of when y'all come, when y'all get done watching this, search on there for the the uh, broken phone dialogue from Amina Nicole. She went in, and I'm like, damn, she dropped all the receipts that I was dropping at the same time I was dropping them. I didn't even know we was moving that much in sync until I seen her doing her receipt review and I was like, holy shit. And everything she said, posted a receipt to. That was fire. While we trying to remember who we is and the Dirty Moors, Conquistadors, is trying to remember who they is. <clears throat> the bays versus the elves, feathers versus the feds, is righteous more versus dirty moors. This is how you know something ain't right. The country that they call Morocco today was founded in like the 40s. Bujo Ali was flying that flag in 1913. In 1913. Right? Wasn't no Morocco. Morocco, not even ancient. So how in the fuck you gonna get me to believe it's an ancient Morocco? What are they using as the means to oppress us at home? It doesn't make sense. So they cat's paw. The cat's paw is the fall guy, the crash dummy, your coat sievers. When the heat come, he supposed to take the heat. But pale face speak with forked tongue. He told us what the motherfuckers was doing because he put it on blackface. Black and white is chest turns. Those who fall under the category of white are the European nobility that came over here to conquer the, uh, the natives of this land. The black on the chessboard are your stealth priests from this land, your old Mississippians, and your um, what they call your South Pacific um, tribes coming from Mexico, Olmec, Aztec, Toltec. And then they just say that we just up and left, like when you study the Pueblo, like when you study the Pueblo, they said it's just up and left one day. No, the fuck we didn't. No, the fuck we didn't. We didn't just up and leave. Nigga, we went to war and we had packed our families up and we was on our way to go fight the Gullah Wars of Florida. They told y'all we lived in teepees. Bullshit. We got castles that have been here for thousands of years. They're still standing. 
and all they did was turn them into state buildings, mental institutions, and prisons, and told you that there was none of that shit over here, that there was no royalty over here. They don't tell you that we, the old Mississippians had a navy or a port of New Orleans that the French ended up taking, and it wasn't a war, a stronghold for war. At first, it was like when we brought goods from the islands and sent goods to the islands, it was our transport port. And we got trade, we was trading with Africans on the West Coast long before Columbus. Africa got a metropolis over there that's still standing that ain't never failed. And they got y'all thinking this is all new shit. This shit old as fuck. The men need to be seen properly supporting the women so that we can get the imposters out till he get to be an older man. Wait till he get to become an elder and then we are letting evict every motherfucker on the land that don't belong here. But when they show you that they don't know what to do, then the next war chief that's actively alerting the people of the condition can close out the, um, can, he, can serve the notice. That's already been done. If you don't know your culture, you won't understand what's taking place behind the scene. But if you understand your culture, you'll know the farce of what's going on in front of our face. Social media, the news networks, uh, all this shit. The whole entire internet. I don't give a fuck who's using it. The military was a creation for espionage and intelligence by the military military industrial complex. And they own the fucking internet. There, and they own the fucking internet. There is a switch that they can hit and eat, turn off the entirety of the internet. That go for your dark net, your Apple iPhones, all of that shit can be shut off by the US military with one button. This was seized under Donald J by military intelligence, crimes against humanity. Because Dwight D. Eisenhower signed a treaty with beings that ain't from Earth to allow them to collect samples of humans. They don't got to bring them back. That's why they, he agreed to give them a million people, close to them is 800,000. And it's no, if you Google every year how many people come up missing, it's going to be roughly 800,000. It's not included kidnapped children in the trial ch child trafficking network that we call um, DHS, right? That's being bred in, in, in people's basement like dogs. Like, it's not counting none of them. It's not counting. It's only counting the ones that they was given permission to take. Look, they've discovered Wall Street is behind the laundering of a hundred trillion dollars in child trafficking. Wall Street was created to trade in slaves. Your birth certificate is traded on Wall Street as a secondary. It's traded primarily on what we call the international exchange. The national exchange or the, NAS, the North American Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, is not the same as the international stock exchange, which trades an entirely different volume of currency. When you look at Wall Street, you can trade a dollar on Wall Street. But when you get to that international trading system, you are starting off in the billions. They doing all of this trading in your face, behind your back. They admit to doing it. They show you the numbers. They're not telling you what they really doing. That's like if a dude count drug money, but you don't know your drug dealer and you helping him count money all day. You don't know you count drug money. Now, let's just say he's also a casino owner. Now, you under the impression you count casino money, but all the time you count drug money. We've been aiding and assisting them in their um, bookkeeping process by using the mortgage fraud cover-up, the um, interest fraud, the inflation fraud cover-up. All of that is to conceal the trading in the human capital of human children, the byproducts, and their body parts. You think when they say they trade pig bellies on the market, they're talking about wank wank pig. No. All of those acronyms, you know them because they're spelt in capital letters. The story inside of every word and inside of every story in that word, it relays a bigger message. You understand how the mind works. 
they can run all kind of bullshit on you. But as soon as you figure out how you process information and then you see how they laying it down, right? It's called mimics, mimics, right? M-E-M-I-C-S. And what that does is give you what they call micro bytes of data and they cover it up with a bunch of information. So it's one page in the encyclopedia you need, but you have to go through all of these volumes, A through Z, pick the book you want, then you gotta pull that book out, then you gotta go through that book, get to the page. That's how you read the acronyms. They're doing this on purpose because they don't believe that when somebody come along and tell y'all what's going on, y'all gonna have waking up to the point where you can see clearly what's going on in front of your face, that they doing behind your back. They hide it in the open so that they can exempt themselves from any karmic debt to it because you agree to it when you accept it. Y'all know the uh y'all know the postal trick, right? The postal trick is to get you to get a mailbox that's not at the post office. They want you to put the mailbox on your house, but they tricked you. What you mean, Rob? Because in they law. A postal zone, 10 mile perimeter around a post box. It's jurisdictional error. Every post box gives them jurisdiction for 10 square miles. It's five of them on your street alone if it's five houses. And they all overlapping. And this is why they don't listen to your complaints about jurisdiction when you go in a court. Because they don't want to tell you how they how you gave them jurisdiction. Because once they once they tell you, look. You got a mailbox on your house, which gives us postal, postmaster general jurisdiction. This is what they're doing to us. You don't look at it like a warden in the prison, you will never understand what's going on. Because now I understand Alex Jones' prison planet, what he's talking about on a whole nother level now. I'm looking at it from the warden's eyes. The warden knows something know everything going on in the prison even if you don't act on it. They allow a certain amount of shit to go on in the prison in order to keep control of the prison. They allow a certain amount of motherfuckers to speak up. Uh, and then when he get too big for his britches, they gonna set his ass down. Uh, and then when he get too big for his britches, they gonna set his ass down because he started to wake up too many inmates. Because now the government has to keep track of what they call the trustees. There's tribes all over this bitch that don't follow none of that shit. And we've been to war over the years for them attacking. 1974, 75, they went on to a reservation um, and had a shootout with reservation Indians, right? Now they post that jurisdiction, the FBI, to investigate criminal activity on a reservation. The only problem with that is somebody has to report criminal activity on the reservation. The problem with that is, is the people on the reservation don't fuck with you people like that. It's an infiltrator in the house. The police are not supposed to respond to a crime unless they directly witness it or they are called and the person calling is either the victim or the person who directly witnessed it, who's making a citizen's arrest. The police is not supposed to make the first arrest. The police is not supposed to make the first arrest. The citizen that's making the complaint is because the police is a slave catching force, but they tricked you because the police is a slave catching force. All they need you to do is identify the slave that's belligerent to the meritorious manumission. Look that up. In other words, they're charging us. They're charging us without a crime. I don't give a fuck who you is. Because in order to be a citizen, you have to be tied to something called a nation or a national. You gotta have all nations under the law of nations have to have a flag. And that's why I told y'all, it's a white flag out here in one of these buildings. And I got to find that motherfucker. So 